Hello, this is Terry Bradshaw, Research Specialist at the University of Vermont. In this presentation, I will summarize arthropod and disease incidence on fruit and foliage in the two organic orchards described in Dr. Burkett's Introduction to the Organica Project. This material was originally presented at the 2011 New England Vegetable and Fruit Meetings in Manchester, New Hampshire. This talk is divided into three parts, including a quick introduction in part one, followed by separate discussions on disease and arthropod incidents in the orchards. As a recap from the introductory presentation, the research conducted here was on five high-value apple varieties, Ginger Gold, Honeycrisp, Liberty, Macallan, and Zestar, planted in two orchards, managed organically since they were either planted or top crafted in 2006. Orchard 1 is the newly planted orchard on a trellised vertical axe training system, 580 trees per acre with dwarf trees and mulched or cultivated tree row. Orchard 2 is the top grafted orchard onto which the five varieties were grafted on 18 year old freestanding semi dwarf mauling 26 trees which were originally Liberty or Macintosh cultivar. This orchard is planted at 290 trees per acre and ground cover management includes a mowed sod tree row. We can see from this image of Orchard 1 in the summer of 2011, we have a good view of the training system, the mulch ground cover, irrigation system, and the relative tree vigor. We can see some smaller tree canopies with a fair amount of air between each tree, which provides good air circulation and we can see low fruit density, which means less moisture collecting between fruit surfaces. Here's a quick snapshot of Orchard 2 in the same summer of 2011. These trees are more vigorous. They're filling out their space quite well. There is more potential for shading in the canopy and increased canopy moisture or humidity from that shading. We also can see greater fruit density, more fruit packed closer together which may allow for increased refugia for disease organisms or arthropods and also create higher humidity in the fruit zone. In addition to the overall cultivar evaluation conducted in these two orchards, a separate kelp extract trial was performed in 2009 and 2010. This is in response to poor tree growth that was noted through 2008 in Orchard 1. In 2009, we began this study where we looked at two extracts from the kelp Ascophyllum nodosum. These two commercially available products, C-Crop 16 and Stimplex, are marketed as general growth stimulants and we trialed them against their potential impacts on disease and arthropod uh, incidence and severity. There was a split plot design of the three treatments C-Crop 16, Stimplex, and the non-treated control foliar applied at the recommended field rates season long in 2009 and 2010. For the most part, there were no effects from either material during the study except for a couple of instances that I will highlight during the presentation. At the beginning of this research project, we had some expectations as to what would be our primary pest challenges. We expected that apple scab would be a primary disease of concern. The cultivars planted in both orchards are susceptible to apple scab and require a mineral fungicide spray program based upon sulfur and lime sulfur applications. We also expected that rust, fruit rots, and some other diseases may be an issue under organic management, but our primary concern was apple scab. For insects, we expected plum curculio, European apple sawfly, codling moth, and other lepidopteran pests would likely be our primary uh, pest complex that we would have to deal with in the orchard. This phase of the project was completed over three years with very different weather and growing conditions because disease pressure is often correlated with free moisture Monthly rainfall totals are an important consideration in the potential for disease pressure in a given season. During the study, we had two very wet seasons in 2009 and 2011. 
with the latter year having nearly 12 inches of rainfall over the 20-year average for the orchard site. 2010 was a drier year and thus may have had less inherent disease pressure. Although these orchards are certified organic, an approved spray program has been used as part of a complete integrated pest management program to help manage insect and disease pests in the orchards. In 2009, 12 fungicide applications were applied, including 9 liquid lime sulfur and 3 elemental sulfur. We also used 14 insecticides. However, many of these are tank mixed applications where a single application would have multiple materials to cover the various pests that were uh, emerged at that time. We used five kaolin sprays against Plum Curculio, one early season neem oil spray targeted at European apple sawfly, two horticultural oil sprays used to manage mite in six lepidopteran specific sprays, which included Dipel, a BT material, and Entrust. The Entrust sprays were also targeted at apple maggot fly. In 2010, we had a similar spray program with a few differences. Even though it was a drier weather year, we still use IPM tools, including weather monitoring, and pest modeling to predict potential infections. Given the need to cover our, our, the tree canopies prior to the initiation of an infection, we still had to apply 13 sulfur or liquid lime sulfur sprays onto the orchard for times when we were afraid that apple scab may become a, a, a possibility given the weather data we had at hand. We also applied two bactericides, one copper material, CHAMP WG, applied early in the dormant season as we had applied in 2009, but we also applied two streptomycin sprays to protect against fire blight, a devastating bacterial disease that can infect trees if bloom conditions occur with very warm weather and the potential for free moisture. We used 14 insecticide sprays, but again, most of these sprays were tank mixed where, where more than one material was put in the tank at a time to try to cover the full complex of pests that was emerged at the time we were applying. We used six kaolin sprays versus Plum Curculio, two early season neem sprays, that's the Aza Direct product, one pyrethrum spray targeted toward European apple sawfly, a single oil spray for mites, and we only used four lepidopteran specific targeted sprays against leps. We will see the outcome for that later. 2011 was another very wet year and the amount of moisture impacted the spray program used in the orchards. There were 12 fungicide sprays applied and although we've been trying to get away from liquid lime sulfur due to its impact on net photosynthesis in the trees after application, we did use it six times in the orchards in 2011 and elemental sulfur six times. Liquid lime sulfur has the unique ability to burn out spores which have already initiated infection if it is applied after the infection has already occurred. Therefore, if you have a wet program, a wet season, and the previous spray's coverage is, is questionable, liquid lime sulfur can help to cover for some of that uh, questionable spray uh, residue from the previous application. This was a very big year for arthropod management, particularly uh, in regard to codly moth and other lepidopteran pests. Uh, we made nine applications of kaolin targeted toward Plum Curculio, apples, European apple sawfly, and codling moth, mostly because the material continued to wash off nearly every week with the heavy rainstorms that we had. We made a, a single early season neem application targeted toward tarnished plant bug, and we made three applications of horticultural oils targeted at mite pests. This is the first time in this orchard that we've applied a summer mite treatment, and the data shown in later sections of this uh, presentation will show you why we, we, we were concerned. And then we applied no less than 25 
Lepidopteran specific sprays. However, most of these sprays were a tank mixed combination of materials to try to cover the full spectrum of Lepidopteran pests in the orchard. We applied 12 low rate, high frequency applications of Bacillus thuringiensis, Bt. This was applied to have a general low dose out, out in the orchard throughout most of the season to try to keep many of the Lepidopteran pests uh, uh, managed during their, their feeding periods. We applied nine codling moth specific low dose high frequency applications of codling moth granulosis virus, a material that is specific to only uh, manage codling moths and no other Lepidopteran materials. We also apply four and trust applications, which typically cover uh, oblique banded leaf roller and apple maggot fly uh, populations. So we had three materials used for different specific insects, and we really were trying to, uh, to cover them well to try to reduce the population, not just for this year, but also for future years. This concludes the first introductory part of this presentation. Please continue to part two where I will discuss disease incidents in the two research orchards.